Welcome to Electron Online. In this example, we have something slightly different from before. Remember when we did the node analysis type of examples, we always had current sources, but in this case we have two current sources, but we also have a voltage source. So therefore, the title says node analysis with a voltage source. What do we do with that? Now, if all of them were voltage sources and there were no current sources, I would recommend to do the mesh analysis method. But in this case, since it's a mixed bag, we can get by with still using the nodal analysis method, but we need to do something special with that voltage source. Well, let's go ahead and start applying the, the, uh, the steps one by one, and then when we get to a certain step, then we need to do something special. First, we're going to find a reference node with known voltage, and why, not, why don't we just go ahead and connect this to ground to make this zero volts. The next, Step is to assign voltages to the other nodes. And notice there is a, uh, a node right here, there's a node right there. So we call this uh, first node V1, second node V2. Next, we want to assign currents to each of the branches. Well, let's see here. We have a current to this branch. Let's call this uh, current one, I1. We have a current through this branch, let's call this I2, and we have a current through this branch, let's call this I3, and we have potential current to this branch, but since it's a voltage source, we'll just leave that alone. We only want to look at currents through the branches that have resistors. The next step, we're going to apply the Kirchhoff current law to find the equations, uh, to, to find the equations Next, we're going to apply the Kirchhoff current law to add each of the two nodes to come up with the equations that we need to solve for the voltages. But there's one problem here. The problem is this voltage source. How do we deal with that? What we can do at this point, we can, we can make what we call a super node. We can take this whole thing right here and think of this as a single node. Let's call this a super node. The super node includes the node at V1, the node at V2, the voltage source, the resistor here, the 10 ohm resistor, and the current I1. If we do that, we now have something slightly different. We have one node, and we have current going in and current coming out. We have two amps coming into the super node, we have I2 coming out of the super node, we have I3 coming out of the super node, and we have the 7 amp coming out of the super node as well. Our equation will now look as follows. So number four, now we'll have a single equation where this is now called the super node. All the currents entering must equal all the currents leaving that node, which means two amps going in must equal the I2 coming out, the I3 coming out, and the seven amps coming out. So now we have a singular equation that has I2, I3, and one equation, two nodes, we know we cannot solve that. However, we're now going to use the same technique as before. Let's define the currents in terms of their voltages, the voltages in the circuit right here. So, step five, this was step four. Step five now, we're going to define, let's see here, how about I2? Let me check something real quick. I2 can be defined as the voltage drop here divided by the resistance. That means the voltage where we came from, so I2 is equal to the volts where we came from, V1 minus 0 divided by the resistance, which is 2. I3 can be defined, I3 can be defined as the voltage drop, which is V2 minus 0, V2 minus 0 divided by the resistance, which is 4. And can I1 be defined? Yes, it can be defined because I know that the voltage from V1 to V2 must be 2 volts. Hence, I1 can be defined as V1 minus V2 divided by 10 ohms. I now have I1, I2, and I3 defined in terms of voltages. I can now go ahead and substitute these for I2 and I3. Step six, 
2 equals I2, and I2 is equal to V1 divided by 2, plus I3, and I3 is equal to V2 divided by 4, and I add 7 to that. Simplifying this equation a little bit, I can do that by multiplying the equation by 4. That gives me 8 is equal to 2V1 plus V2 plus 28. Moving the 28 to the other side and turning the equation around, I get 2V1 plus V2 is equal to minus 20. And there's the equation I end up with, but I still have a problem. I have two unknowns and just one equation. However, coming back over here, I do realize that V2 must be V1 plus the 2 volts from the voltage source. V2 must equal V1 plus 2. I can then go ahead and plug that into my equation right here, which means that my equation now becomes 2V1 plus V2, which is V1 plus 2 equals minus 20. 3V1 is equal to minus 22. And therefore, V1 must be equal to minus 22 divided by 3. And that would be equal to 7 or minus 7.333, and that's the voltage at V1. Now that I have my voltage of V1, I can come back up here and find the voltage for V2. V2 is equal to V1, which is a minus 7.333 volts. Add 2 volts to that, and so V2 now becomes a minus 5.333 volts. And that gives me the voltage over here. Once I have determined the voltages at my two nodes, I can now come back and find the currents I1, I2, and I3. I1 is now equal to V1 minus V2 divided by 10. V1 was defined as minus 7.333 and subtract from that V2 which was defined as a minus 5.333. Divide the whole thing by 10. Minus 7 plus 5, that's a minus 2, that's minus 2 divided by 10, which is equal to minus 0 0.2 amps. Minus would indicate that that's in the opposite direction than was drawn. So we actually have current flowing from right to left through the 10 ohm resistor instead of from left to right. The second current can be found, I sub 2, by taking V1 divided by 2, V1 is minus 7.333 divided by 2, which would be equal to a minus 3.667 amps. Let's see if we double that. Yes, 3.5, that's 7. That is correct. And so this would be the current I2. It's a negative current. So coming over here, so instead of the current flowing in this direction, the current actually flows in this direction. I bet that this stronger current source compared to this one caused the current to flow in this direction. And finally, I3 can be found by taking V sub 2 and dividing it by 4. V sub 2 is a minus 5.333 amps, or I should say volts, divided by 4, which is, looks like 4 times 1.3, yes! That would be a minus 1.333 amps. Summarizing, we have the three currents, and let's see if we can make sense out of this picture now. We have I3 actually flowing in the opposite direction, I2 flowing in the opposite direction, I1 flowing in the opposite direction. So the current comes this way, flows this way here, flows this way here, comes together. Some of it flows in this direction, and the rest flows in this direction to the 7 amps. Combining 2 amps to I2, I2 is a minus 3.67, that would be a 5.67 amps coming this way. And I3 is flowing in this direction, 
That's 1.333, so 7 minus 1.33 does indeed give us the 2 combined over here. Everything looks like it's uh, correct. Those would be the correct currents and the correct voltages for the circuit. Summarizing, coming back over here, whenever you have a voltage source like that, it helps to go ahead and encompass it into what we call a region called a super node. Combine all that into a single node, look at all the currents leaving, look at all the currents entering that super node, and then realizing that the voltage source causes a potential difference between the one side and the other side, in this case between those two nodes. This information in form of this equation, along with the equation we get when we take the Kirchhoff current law equation and then substitute in that the voltages related to the currents, this equation combined with this equation allows us to solve for the voltages at the nodes. And that's how a problem like this is done.